Greetings, I'm Liz Ortiguera, CEO of Pacific Asia Travel Association, otherwise known as PATA. I'm honored to be speaking with you today and I'll be covering three topics. First, our most current travel and tourism situation in the region. Second, opportunities and challenges as we emerge from this pandemic. And then third, strategies for a sustainable ASEAN tourism industry. To cover these topics, I'll share with you a brief deck. No doubt, we're all keen to get travel restarted across the region. 4.7 million people in Southeast Asia went into extreme poverty in 2021, as 9.3 million travel jobs disappeared compared with the baseline of pre-COVID. This is all according to a recent ADB study. In this first slide, is a summary of the destination status of openings. This slide shows the status of market reopenings from across our region, as well as vaccination status. We all recognize that vaccinations are a key foundation to ensuring a safe, sustainable opening and governments across our region prioritize this for the benefit of both our local communities and incoming visitors. Kudos to the strong efforts made across the region. But the job is not finished yet. 2.8 billion people have still not had a first vaccine and many currently still need boosters. So in December, PATA kicked off support for the WHO Foundation and COVAX with the Global Vaccine Travel Sector Coalition. This is being done in partnership with Virgin Atlantic and Collinson. The pandemic is still very much among us and it's important that we close gaps on supplying vaccines and now boosters. We've just launched one aspect of this initiative to create one month booths in airports to engage travelers in our fundraising efforts. Please contact me if you'd like to support one in your nation's airport. Moving on to view of our most current situation in travel. Current, as, as of the end of April, we're about to release our latest PATA actuals and forecast of international visitor arrival numbers for 39 destinations. The statistics you see are an overview of regions relative to 2019 visitor arrivals with actuals for Q1. As we know, Asia Pacific was the most impacted during the pandemic and we're still the slowest to recover. Looking forward, this slide shows the PATA forecast of international arrivals to Asia over the next 2.5 years. The different colored lines on this graph show our worst, moderate, and best case scenarios, since there are so many variables in the market that can impact our outcomes. We're seeing optimistically overall volumes returning to 36% of 2019 as the most likely scenario of inbound visitor arrivals for 2022, 68% for 2023, and then a return to overall 2019 baseline volumes in 2024. That said, there is an uneven recovery across the region with some destinations faring better than others. Each destination has its unique set of challenges and opportunities. And I would say travelers also have different behaviors. They're taking longer journeys, staying longer with multi-purpose. So there are a lot of learnings to be had about this new consumer emerging from the pandemic. Multiple research reports have shown that the post-pandemic traveler approaches the world with a new mindset. The destinations that succeed will adapt to these new needs and interests. Here's an example of one research report. In a March study by Economist Impact, 4,500 travelers surveyed from across our region indicated that post-pandemic, doing more conscious travel is more important to them. Overall average was at a very high 87%. Now, as for the next holiday they want to take, 
on average, 57% said, I will factor sustainable tourism practices into my next holiday. This is called the rise of the conscious traveler. They want destinations that are well-preserved and well-managed and want to know that they can make a neutral or positive impact on the local community and environment. I'll now share with you a few ways Apata is here to support your drive to sustainability and recovery. First, Hotel Net Zero. Working with Greenview, we helped develop the Hotel Net Zero methodology. This is beyond just the basics. This guide helps your hotel properties set up their net zero programs. It outlines how to identify and address scope one and two emissions, and then provide steps to identify, prioritize, and address scope three. This puts real actions against commitment. Next, at our Pata Destination Marketing Forum coming up in August, we'll be sharing community-based tourism and destination marketing best practices, including a session on creative tourism. Creative tourism is defined as a tourist active participation in classes with learning experiences, which are characteristic of the destination where they are undertaken. Some of the benefits of creative tourism include, first, co-creation, active visitor engagement. Visitors should be active participants in the process of creating creative tourism experiences. Creative tourism should allow them to experience the authentic culture and tradition of a community, as well as develop their creative potential in fields such as cooking, painting, arts, and crafts. Second, community empowerment. The artists, cooks, and craft workers in your communities should be involved in the tourism decision-making processes. Choose which aspects of their culture to share with visitors and co-create the activities with them. The community should also be informed on the positive and negative impacts of tourism. Third, destination identity and authenticity. Creative tourism activities and experiences must reflect the authentic local traditions so that these are respected, preserved, and promoted. And then lastly, local economic development. The creative tourism sector should be valued and incentivized through professional trainings, tour guiding and storytelling, for example, for community artists and artisans who must also have decent pay and good working conditions for sustainable economic development. The next slide profiles a recent small but critical pilot program delivered by PATA in Thailand. Our informal workers outreach program involved community outreach and support to over 500 informal workers in tourism. The hardest hit segment, which includes the likes of drivers, tour guides, vendors, and hostel workers. We provided health and safety training, as well as business advisory advice, including digital marketing and use of online payments, for example. Pata is currently in discussions with a couple of corporates on an opportunity to expand this program. Please contact us if you're interested in having a similar program in your country. The next page features another recently launched Pata program. In December, we launched the Tourism Destination Resilience Program with in-person training in Cambodia, Indonesia, Philippines, and Vietnam. The goal of this program is to train public sector employees at the national, regional, and local level on defining the critical elements behind destination management. The online version of the training program is now translated to eight different languages and is available to all government destinations across this region. As highlighted on this next slide, staff are trained on five different critical resiliencies to consider how to maintain and grow capacity in a healthy destination. Those categories include environment, health and safety, community, local economy, and visitor resiliency. Ultimately, our goal is to support destinations 
across the Asia Pacific in their sustainable des destination goals. Last but not least, I'll share with you the results of a recent sustainability assessment. This page is taken from a recent Euromonitor survey assessing destinations around the world for their sustainability rankings across different categories. As the headline reads, Europe is leading the way. My hope is that within the next two to five years, the new headline will read, Asia is leading the way in tourism sustainability. We're here as PATA to support you in achieving your destination resilience and sustainability goals. To learn more, please contact me or my team, and please do join us at the following events where we can share more. PDMF in Songkhla, Thailand in August, our Pata Annual Summit in October in Rasa Kaima, which is outside Dubai, and then uh, soon to be announced, we will have a Pata Conference and Travel Mart in Q4 of this year. I would encourage all of our destination members at a senior leadership level to join me and bring your leadership staff to learn more and let us support your sustainability goals. And lastly, as Pata, we're strong believers that travel, when developed and executed well, can be a force for good especially in Asia. It brings down cultural barriers and has always been an engine for jobs creation and in economic growth. It will continue to deliver on this critical role post pandemic for our region. I look forward to partnering with you on that journey. Thank you.